My name is Jonathan Mizrahi. I am the executive director of uh, Emek Shaveh. Emek Shaveh is an, an, an Israeli NGO who deals with the role of archaeology in the political conflict in Israel-Palestine. In my profession, I'm an archaeologist. Emek Shaveh began as, with a group of Israeli archaeologists. I was one of them by doing what we are calling the archaeological tour or the alternative archaeological tour to, to the village of Silwan and the archaeological city of David, the archaeological site known as City of David. We're talking about a site or a village which located in East Jerusalem, south to the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif, Al-Aqsa, again, different names to the place, which is also south to the, to the old city, outside of the old city. It's a Palestinian village um, uh, that in, in the land of the village, or under the land of the village, actually, there are ruins from important archaeological site, which called today, called today, especially City of David or ancient Jerusalem. And what's so important in the ruins is that they, the site has the ruins from the beginning of Jerusalem. Uh, from the Canaanite period and later all Judean period and all kind of other periods and Roman and Hellenistic as well. But in general, uh, the core of Jerusalem began uh, in, in the place known as City of David Silwan. And like I said before, it's also a Palestinian village. Now, it became kind of a kind of a contentious issue because in on one hand, we have an Israeli groups, Israeli settlers groups, actually, who are settling in Silwan and operating the archaeological site in order to increase their influence and legitimation among the Israeli public about the present in East Jerusalem. And in the same time, obviously, since it's a Palestinian village, um, this leads to a lot of clashes and obviously uh, problems for the Palestinian residents that suddenly found themselves living next to an archaeological site, which become an obstacle for their daily life, but also kind of a tool that explain the public why there's only specific people who belong here, which are the Israelis and the Palestinians are, uh, let's say, at, at least in the good term, are in the status of guests in their own village. So, so, so what we are doing there, we're doing, we, we, we began with um, alternative tools which explain how archaeology and how the historical narrative and how the land or the excavation themselves influenced the or used in the political conflict, how they used in the hand of the settlers or the Israeli authorities, how it affects the life of the Palestinians. And also, um, we also suggest in kind of an approach that see archaeology in a more holistic way, which come and say that the history is something that's important to both sides, or all sides actually, and should be understood in a wider context of different civilizations and development of civilizations. I'm not sure that we can really identify the site and say, okay, this is a clear uh, Israeli site or Palestinian site. But we could say, what we can say is obviously if it's a, it used to be a site, a Muslim site or a Jewish site or Christian site or pagan site or whatsoever. Okay, and sometimes this is identification we can give. But with all the respect to the idea of uh, the modern nationalism, it's a bit different than, than the way we deal with archaeology. Um, Obviously, today in this conflict, the Israelis come and say that a Jewish layer means our presence. Sorry. Sorry. Wait, wait a second. So, so the identification will not be Israeli-Palestinian. It will be both probably, like you can understand, more uh, with religious aspects like Jewish, Muslims, Christian, and so on. Uh, which also is extremely complicated, but let's make it simplify as much as we can. Now, now it's not about which layers you find. It's not necessarily which layers you find. There, there are a few questions. First of all, the question is which layer, what layer you find and what layer you keep, which means that you might find different layers, but not necessarily you will keep them. You might decide to keep specific layers from all kinds of reasons, by the way. Um, so obviously, this is one thing. And... Um, um, sorry. Now the, sec <coughs> the second thing, which is very important, is um, the narrative that you say. I mean, you might keep different layers, but the story that you say might focus or emphasize specific layers. 
But the third thing is how it's been used as a nationalistic tool, which means if you take an archaeological site and said, because this history, and even if by recognizing other periods and other history, but because a specific history, I have the right to be here and I have the right to deny the others rights to be here, the others, I mean, other cultures and other uh, ethnic groups that live here, um, this is when it becomes a, a problem. So it's not just about how you represent the site, it's also about how you understand or interpret the site and come and say how the site helps you to legitimate your presence or uh, uh, the, the claiming of land. Um, so, so, so it's more, uh, it's more than, it's, more, it's not just about what the archaeologists do, which is part of it, but also how the site later on interpret it and represent it to the public. I believe that most of the Israelis, definitely the policymakers, understand our point of view. And I also believe that at least 80 or 90 percent of what we are saying is something that can be accepted and is accepted by the Israeli authorities and by the Israeli public. Um, things like settlers shouldn't operate site or archaeological site is something that the Israelis can understand and accept. Things like the narrative should be much more um, pluralistic is something that the Israelis can accept and understand. Think that the way the Israeli Antiquity Authority is working today with the settlers is problematic regard to its prof professionality is something that the policymakers can understand. Eventually, from political reasons, this understanding is not becoming a change. I mean, eventually, um, our statement is probably not changing the, poli the politics. No, in, in Mekshavei, in general, we don't talk with the settlers. I mean, we think the settlers shouldn't be there. We do talk with the Israeli authorities. Although we're criticizing a lot of the Israeli authorities, we also talk to the Israeli authority because they are eventually the policy makers that are supposed to make the change. We don't talk to the settlers. It doesn't mean that uh, some of them we know for, for, for years, so uh, we might say hello if we cross the street. I mean, uh, but, but we don't talk regards to get any agreement or any decisions or cooperation or something like that. We get, we're receiving a lot of criticism regards to that, why we don't talk to the settlers, but we are saying that we don't accept the presence of the settlers there and we see their presence there because of the government involvement and the government decision. And this is why we talk to the government that will change its policy and take them away from there. The main thing that I think happened in the last 10 years that Israel, first of all, changed its policy in regards to East Jerusalem, which means much more investments in East Jerusalem, especially investments in touristic and archaeological projects in order to increase the hold of the Israelis or to emphasize the Israeli part, a part in, in, in Jerusalem. Um, so Israel invested, uh, investing actually millions or hundreds of millions of shekels in that. Um, something else is that uh, in the last five years, since 2010, it's very clear, the government also decided to develop a lot or a few touristic sites in the West Bank and actually copying what they see the success of City of David. Like if they succeeded to make City of David such acceptable among the Israeli public, they would like the Israeli public to recognize that places like Hebron, South Hebron Hills, places like Susia, Shiloh in the area of Nablus, and so on are also supposed to understood as part of the Israeli public, Israeli history and, the, and our past and things like that. So we see this idea is increasing and this development is increasing in the last five years. And like I said before, in the last 10 years, regards to Jerusalem. Yes. It means that if you like to reach human rights, you must create a political change. I mean, you should fight for human rights and uh, any, any tool that you can use, you should use if it's court and if it's other 
ways, but eventually the best way to create uh, or to promote a better human human rights to the society who lives here is to create a political change which recognize the rights of the Palestinians, okay? Also, it's, it's much more complicated, the rights of others, but let's focus to make it simplified. Now, that would mean, it means that from our understanding, we are fighting, um, first of all, in order to, to recognize the Palestinian rights, if you want to call it that way, and, uh, and, and saying that a um, few things. First of all, saying that archaeology shouldn't be a tool in this political conflict, first of all. This is why excavation should have happened. But the second thing that we, we the Israelis, has to recognize that the heritage of this land belongs also, no less or equally or whatever you want, or even sometimes even more, to the Palestinians. They're not just, it's, a, it's not just our heritage. It's the heritage of this place, and it's not something exclusively belongs to the Israelis. I think that eventually, um, not taking side is taking side. And not taking side, it means that, okay, you say, I don't take a side, I just, I don't know, everybody, I listen to everybody in equal way and things like that. Eventually, not taking side is mean taking side and it's the side of the strong side. And, and I think our obligation is, whenever we can, is to take side and to try to, to understand uh, wh where is wrong and what is right and, and, uh, and to walk in, in this direction. And um, although, in one hand, don't expect that the small person will be the one who's changing, but every person is matter regards to, to, to the struggle.